today. I always told you there were going to be crossovers between my radio show and my TV show. Well, we had an opportunity to visit with Governor Burgum. And if you read between the lines and you kind of listen to the code there, I think you're going to find out some things. Uh, and you'll get a chance to get his take on how certain legislation is working. But first, we're going to head back uh, to Bismarck. We're going to make sure we get a chance to visit with State Representative Zach Ista. Uh, Representative, good to have you coming down the road with us. Nice to be back, Joel. How are you? You know, we were talking before the show about uh, about what time in the session it is. Why don't, why don't you give people an example of what you told me? Uh, you know, I told you this is the Hotel California period of the session. Uh, you can check out, but you can never leave, and that's, that's sort of what we're doing here. We're all just... Uh, we're in a holding pattern waiting for conference committees to resolve, for budgets to finalize, for all those backroom deals to be completed, and, and then we'll stand ready to vote uh, on these bills when they get to the floor. Just a little lesson for those people who uh, maybe aren't familiar with the process, but there's disagreements between the House and the Senate, and so then there's conference committees to kind of iron those out on any piece of legislation that so far has passed, and then they bring it to the floor. and. Quite frankly, Representative Ista, there's no guarantee it's going to pass again, is there? That's that's right. And, and not only are these conference committee uh, committees ironing out differences, this is a, a lot of times where you see the shenanigans happen too. You see things slipped in that maybe we uh, voted down earlier or, or never even considered, and, and we're starting to see examples of that here in the last couple of days too. Yeah, and they try to bring it to the floor and, and uh, you know, as a Hail Mary pass, and then they don't, they think you're not going to read it. I mean, that, that's the key to the whole thing. They, they think you're not going to pay attention. I want to talk to you a little bit about House Bill 1465. Uh, it eliminates out-of-network health care charges. Talk to me about this. What does this bill do? So, so 1465 came to us as, as a good bill. It, you know, it was going to study our health uh, insurance system here in the state of North Dakota, something we all care about, had broad support. Uh, but this is one of those uh, areas where there were shenanigans. You know, we've uh, we're kind of ending this session where I think we started it uh, in a way that we're in a time that we need serious lawmakers to do serious work to address our serious problems. But we're spending so much time on on distractions and what I call government by conspiracy theory, and that's where 1465 has ended up. We now have language slipped in last minute without any sort of meaningful public hearing that's all about these so-called vaccine passports. Uh, and, and trying to ban those here in, in the state of North Dakota. And, uh, you know, we had a similar bill that was uh, attempted to be brought to the House floor just last week. This far-right faction of Republicans tried to do an end-around of their own House leadership, bring this bill directly to the floor for consideration, and that failed. Uh, and it failed because vaccine passports aren't a thing that's happening in North Dakota. This is all just... Uh, social media driven conspiracy theory of people thinking you're going to have to show your your papers to go into the mall or into the gas station uh, to, to pick up your your chips and pop uh, and and i was optimistic for a moment there the the house leadership stood up they resisted that attempt they said no the bill's not coming forward but now here we are a, a couple days later and, and it looks a little bit like appeasement to me giving into this faction of, of the far right and letting them uh, bring a vaccine passport to the floor without public hearing, without public input. Uh, and, and, you know, this is exactly at a time where our state is seeing uh, high rates of vaccine hesitancy. People aren't wanting to get this uh, life-saving COVID vaccine. And, and it's no wonder. You've got, uh, you know, Republican uh, lawmakers on the House floor peddling anti-vaxxer conspiracy theories. Uh, and, and, and I think that sends the wrong message to, to North Dakota. And I, I should also add, add, Joel, there's some irony here that, you know, the Republican Party styles itself as, as less government and pro-business. Well, you know what this bill does? It says that a private business in this state cannot require its customers to do something, in this case, show vaccine records. I mean, this might be the most big government anti-business law we pass this, this entire session. I, I don't know if our mom and pop shops need to take down their no shirt, no shoes, no service sign next. I mean, I don't know why we're meddling in the marketplace like this, but that's where we find ourselves at this stage in the session. Did, did the North Dakota Chamber, the GNDA, uh, the Greater North Dakota Association, did they weigh in on this? Because really it does uh, put that burden back on that local business and tell them exactly what they must do. So if they're going to be champions of, of business, of Main Street, it would seem to me that they'd come out against this bill now. 
Right, you're exactly right. This is, you know, right up the alley of groups like the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, to, to my knowledge, I haven't seen any public statements uh, from them on this, but uh, in all fairness, again, we didn't have a, a committee hearing on this bill. We didn't have a chance for witnesses to come in and testify for or against. Uh, so th that's another part of the problem with this is, is we're not doing this out in the open. We're doing this based on what people see on, on their Twitter feed and their Facebook and, and, and emails you get that just are incoherent and, and rambling about conspiracy theories. So, you know, and I hate to put you on the spot and you might not know the answer, but I promised myself, um, you know, covering this legislative session that I'd name names, that I'd know who it was. And so... In this particular case, we say far right, and, and once again, it's, it's that far right wing of the Republican Party. But who is it? Who's driving it? Who's the individual that comes down to that committee and says, look, I'm representative or senator so-and-so, and I'm telling you, I'm pushing this amendment? Sure. I mean, when, when the end around came to the floor last, uh, last week, that was led by Representative Sebastian Ertelt uh, of, of District 26, I believe, down, uh, down in southeast North Dakota. So it's, it's, you know, he's one of the leaders pushing this, folks like Jeff Hoverson, Jeff Magrum, um, uh, the, the folks that, you know, your viewers might refer to as the Bastiat uh, Caucus. They're the, the ones leading the push for this. And then it's, uh, you know, committee chairmen who are, who are appeasing this nonsense, in, in my view, uh, and letting them uh, insert these provisions and, and pushing it forward just, just so they can, you know, go back to their constituents with this win of now we are banning vaccine passports that were never happening in the first place. Is there any conversation about how this might affect a local business that operates through a national business? For example, if, if I'm the local Coke distributor and Coca-Cola on a national scale says, look, you will do this, uh, we need to have this, uh, you know, that puts a heck of a burden on that local distributor to be able to look at their corporate partner or their father or mother when it comes to all of this and, and say, look, I can't do it in my state. And again, uh, that, that corporation that works on a way bigger scale than what North Dakota might say, what the heck am I doing business there for? Absolutely, that's definitely one consideration that again has been lost in the conversation because the conversation never happened. Uh, you know, we've, we keep pointing out that we don't control the, the FAA at the federal level. So if you wanna fly an, an airplane, in an, on an airplane, they're making you show proof of your vaccination. There's nothing we can do to stop that. Well, you're right, Joel, that many of these big companies have outlets in North Dakota, and we certainly want to have a climate in this state that welcomes those companies to come, but bills like this, uh, you know, send some, some mixed messages at best to your Coca-Colas, your Amazons, your, your big national companies that might want a presence in North Dakota, but now they have to ask what kind of business climate uh, will they find here. Yeah. I want to go to Senate Bill 2145. It's a bill that looks to allow nursing home residents to designate a person who can always come, uh, give them a hug and whatnot. Uh, walk me through this bill. What's, what's the force behind this? And, and maybe just you know, tell people what the bill actually does. Right, and, and you're gonna sense a, se a theme here real quick. Again, this bill started out as a good idea. Uh, the idea was we saw during COVID that nursing home residents sometimes were left alone without a loved one to be there to care for them, to touch them, to hug them and obviously for valid reasons, given the spread of the disease. But this bill would, would say to nursing homes, everybody gets to designate one person, that even if there's a pandemic, we're gonna let that one person come in, we're gonna do it safely, and we're gonna follow rules to make sure nobody gets sick. This bill had almost unanimous support uh, when that was all that was in the bill. But here we are again, coming up to that finish line, and we're slipping in language, uh, this time about undocumented children being housed in North Dakota. You might be asking yourself, what does that have to do with caregivers at nursing homes? Well, that question was asked on the House floor yesterday, and the bill carrier himself admitted, not a darn thing. So why does it end up in a bill like this? Well, we heard from, from another Republican, you know, this isn't happening. There aren't busloads of undocumented and migrant children coming to North Dakota. We passed a resolution saying we don't want that. The governor has made clear that's not happening. Again, yesterday, you know, the Republican chairman of the committee admitted there are conversations every week at, between the federal officials and our state officials. This is not something in the works. So why is it in the bill? Here's what they said on the floor, because we saw something on social media. Somebody on social media said there's buses coming our way. So now all of a sudden, last minute, we have to slip in language that hasn't had a public hearing, nobody's got to comment on. 
uh, and, and tack it onto a bill that has nothing to do with. This is just a, a growing frustration, a growing pattern. Uh, again, what I'm calling government by conspiracy theory, uh, instead of doing serious business and moving the state forward for the, the good people in North Dakota. Well, maybe it's a good thing that these people are spending all their time on Facebook because I've seen a number of them uh, uh, look at worse things on their computer, but uh, they actually think this is actually true journalism. I mean, I don't know where the far right has gone in this state. Um, you know, I, I do have to ask you this uh, in relation to that. How does this tie into local control? If I'm the administrator of the nursing home and I have a, an outbreak of COVID, for example, and I need to tighten it up, I need to make sure that uh, my town, which is hot for COVID, needs to just back off for a while. Aren't they taking away that administrator and those employees' ability to then have local control. You're, you're absolutely right. And we've seen a, a, a full on assault on local control on so many of these issues from, from COVID to uh, what the schools can do to protect their students. I mean, we just had an example here uh, in Bismarck where we all are just this week. The local Bismarck school board was deciding whether to keep a mask rule in place for its students. Well, who shows up front and center, gets photographed and in the newspaper, Representative Jeff Magrum from nowhere near the, the Bismarck metropolitan area, uh, Senator uh, Jason Highcamp from Southeast North Dakota, meddling in these local issues. And that just tracks exactly how uh, the majority is, is viewing its role in the legislature this session. Uh, you know, well, I know this. Towns. I've known Jason Highcamp all his life. And best way to describe him is he's a quarter bubble from level. So, um, Representative Vista, good to have you coming down the road with us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joel. Take care. You bet. Get yourself home safe because you're almost done. Uh, you there's bet. light at the end of the tunnel. When we come back, every now and then it's going to cross over. I think that the interview I had with Governor Burgum earlier on radio is one you're going to want to hear. So stick around. Howdy, folks. It's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hot meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar. Sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline Burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan. And yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Hi, Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best selling atomic beam flashlight. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit ByNightHero.com. That's ByNightHero.com. Order now. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury? After taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680.
Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Welcome back to Down the Road. I know every now and then, and I've mentioned this to you if you're a frequent uh, uh, viewer of Down the Road, there's going to be some crossover. There's going to be some interviews that we're able to get on radio that we're going to want to put on TV. There's going to be some interviews on TV that we're going to want to be able to put on the radio. This multimedia platform that we're using is, I think, very useful to every viewer or listener. Well, today I had the opportunity to speak to North Dakota's Governor Doug Burgum over some issues that I think you're going to find interesting. So take a listen to this. Governor, I have to I have to ask you this. Uh, you vetoed a couple bills. One of them didn't stand. Uh, the other one did. Uh, the process of deciding the veto. I won't get into the specific issues of those two bills because I think you spoke to those already and the public has access to that. But how are you determining what bills to veto? Because there's some that I think a lot of people are going to look at here and say you should by the end of this session. Well, well, Joel, I, I think the you, you know me and know that that uh, I bring a lens to this these decisions that includes listening to all North Dakotans. I mean, not not just the people that are in the capital, and not just the people that are you know may have voted for me or not voted for me, but really trying to listen to to citizens and really trying to listen to people that were impacted or are impacted by these things because there's no, nothing better than actually, you know, getting input from the citizens. And believe me, since COVID started, I don't think there's been any governor's office that's received as much feedback on decisions we've made, uh, whether it's decisions related to COVID or decisions related to, uh, leg you know, bills. I mean, there's a lot of activism right now, a lot of people engaged, a lot of involvement, and that's great. And so uh, no shortage of input, but we really work hard to listen to everybody. You know, Governor, I, I do have to uh, – okay, I lied. I'm going to go to one of these issues because you, you can't sit there and say that you're for local control uh, and then take away a mayor's ability to try to slow down a pandemic in his personal community. Um, you know, he's responsible to the voters in that, that area. And so y you vetoed it. You vetoed it because it took away your power as well to use common sense. Uh, that veto um, – you know, wasn't upheld. I mean, the, the, they they turned it around and they said you can't. What what did you what did that feel like? Because you know, this is clearly you know a, a complete hypocrisy of what they say. On one day, uh, you, and it's your side of the aisle that they say local control, and the next day they over overturn your veto. Well, I, I think again on on the uh, mask issue, that wasn't really about the. Uh, current pandemic, I mean, that's really, I think, a reflection of a lot of frustration people have had in the last year. And we just have to, again, focus on the great spot we're in. Our state, you know, is open for business. We've been more open than almost any other state. Uh, we had the shortest mass mandate of any state that had a mass mandate, 65 days. Uh, and we're, you know, our budget is in great shape. Our economy is in great shape. Our kids are in school. And there are still states right now that are around the country that are uh, under lockdown and uh, under a lot of mandates and their economies are suffering. And so I feel like we're in great shape, but it was, it was really about the future is about trying to make sure that you, that, you know, this is a tool in the toolbox. And, and uh, when we last fall, when we needed it, we had mayors asking us for it. We had frontline healthcare workers asking for us. We had long-term care. We had families who'd lost loved ones. I just thought, Hey, it's an important tool to have in the toolbox for a governor. And I think, you know, part of the natural push, in every legislature is what power does the legislature have? What power does the governor have? And in some ways, uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is a uh, uh, part of that tug and pull, but uh, the, the, that bill did get modified before the end. So there still is, you know, school boards and school districts and mayors still have the ability uh, to take health measures like mandates for masks if they think they need to. So there is local control still in there. So this was really more about, I think, <clears throat> you know, some legislators and it came down it was one vote one one vote away from standing so there was a 
Republicans have voted both ways on all of these uh, when you in on these things. But again, we're we're looking to the future and we're looking forward, and we feel like North Dakota's in uh, in great shape going forward. Governor, when you vetoed the transgender bill, did you do so because of what it did to transgender students, or did you do so because of the fact that? Uh, it would have hurt North Dakota economically big time in lost events. Well, I think the the argument, you know, for that bill was we had to have a level playing field in girls' sports and uh, in high school sports for all students. And the good news is we have that today. Uh, we've got a you know zero incidences of a of a uh, an athlete uh, that's in transition or has transitioned, you know, affecting the outcome. Uh, other states. Uh, that are working on these bills have had zero to almost none. And so I, I just felt like this was the, the, the right thing to do. We've got, you talk about local control. We've got the North Dakota high school athletic association. They've had rules in place for five years, but haven't been tested. And I think that's the place where this decision needs to be made between a, you know, a parent and a, and their child and their doctor and their coach and the local school district. And, and, uh, and, and uh, obviously there's, uh, a uh, when we got you know vulnerable children, we want to protect them. But when we don't have a when we when we don't yet have a problem, probably the best place to handle it is the with the with the governing sports body that's in charge of that. Governor twenty thirty, uh, you you've got a long history uh, with North Dakota State University, uh, and and I don't know any governor that isn't going to want to going to want to keep their their institutions that that have research as, um, you know, quite frankly, seen across the nation uh, as places where research can be done without a, a huge microscope of, microscope of the legislature shining on them. And so 2030 criminalizes researchers at NDSU, for example. Have you made up your mind about 2030, whether or not you will veto that? No, that just got to my desk last night. And uh we moved through about another 30 bills last night on that. That wasn't one of them that I've met with my team on yet, but I'll be doing a lot of uh, listening uh, to everybody that's got arguments on on uh, that one as well coming up, but no, haven't made a decision yet, Joel. Have you, have you, do you have any thoughts so far on it, Governor? Well, I think there's uh, plenty of people who have expressed concerns on, on uh, this bill from both sides. And so again, it's a controversial one, a lot of emotion, a lot of, lot of uh, calls and uh, emails pouring into our office so it'll be another one where we've got to really uh, uh, dig in and make a make a tough tough decision uh have you heard from uh the campuses have you heard from the the president for example of ndsu and has he encouraged you to veto it well I, yeah we've heard from all the university folks because obviously when you've got a, a, a you know a, i think it's a 2.8 million dollar penalty uh, you know that might be two percent NDSU's budget. That's twenty percent of Lake Region's budget, uh, and the criminalization aspect of this. Uh, you know, there's for a, a, a if you you know believe in academic freedom, there's a lot of things to be worried about in this uh, in the in that bill. And so yeah, the campuses and uh, others have been pretty quite quite loud about it. And uh, and so and 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 they and I would uh, expect they have got good reason to be to be concerned about it because of the impact it could have on uh, you know the willingness even of a of a someone that's doing research to put sign their name on a grant request Governor, they think it could lead it could lead to criminal charges now we're going to do some more uh, in the next segment we're going to get an opportunity to hear what the the governor thinks on a national scale tonight obviously uh, uh, a joint session of Congress where the President of the United States in the first uh, time as President will get an opportunity to share his vision and speak to some of the issues that he feels needs to be addressed uh, when it comes to the nation as a whole. Uh, Governor Burgum um, has to build a relationship. Uh, we know that. You, you know, you go through these transitions, uh, you know, just recently from Obama to Trump to now uh, Biden, and each one has a different vision. I, I just I want to say this. We were talking about higher education, and I'm still mad at myself that I didn't ask this question about the future model of higher education. And Governor Burgum had some real strong ideas on that. And when we get done uh, listening to the next uh, segment, what we're going to do is get a chance for me to to share some of my thoughts and to get uh, 
just give you my take on where I think the governor is going on this. Because the days of higher ed operating the way it's operating now, I think are over. So when we come back, we'll visit with Governor Burgum on national affairs right after this. Hey, everybody, I'm Doug Billings, your host of The Right Side with Doug Billings on Beck News. We bring you high profile guests, ladies and gentlemen, exclusive guests. Now, you're not going to see these guests in most of the mainstream media outlets. Another thing that I do here is give guests a platform to speak freely. You're not going to see me censor anybody. Please join us, won't you? Weeknights right here on Beck TV and online at Beck.News. Cheers. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. Beck Communications is hiring. Beck Communications is now seeking qualified applicants for promotion commercial producer position in our Bismarck Beck location. This position will assist Beck News and Beck Sports. To view the job details, visit www.beck.coop. To apply, email your cover letter and resume to careers at bechtel.coop. Beck Communications, making connections that matter. If you're uh, just joining us, I want to make sure and set this up again so that you have an understanding of what we're doing. Every now and then on my radio show, I get a guest that I think, okay, we're going to want to make sure that they get to hear that on the television show. Well, here we are. Uh, Governor Bergen was on with us today. And, uh, you know, the, the previous segment here on Down the Road, we talked about the local affairs, what's happening in the legislative session, which... You know, what, what you didn't hear was something I started out with with the governor, which is the, the best side ever for a governor, no matter what governor it is, is the look of taillights when the legislature leaves. And I think you could pick up upon that uh, with Governor Burgum. But I wanted to get a chance to visit with him about national affairs uh, and, and what this speech from Joe Biden means to, to him and, and how it affects our state. So take a listen to this. Governor, the Biden administration, um, one of the things they're going to discuss tonight is the potential of being able to pay uh, tuitions to what they describe as community colleges. Have you checked in and and will we it, it, say that passes, which I think it does have a chance of passing uh, free tuition in those community colleges. Will that affect our two year schools in North Dakota, Governor? Well, like a lot of things that are uh you know, there's so much uh, money coming from the federal government right now, including this, uh, uh, the you know, the rescue plan that got passed uh, by the current, you know, Congress. 
uh, but they pass the bills and then the, we don't get the guidance. And so we're still, uh, we still don't know on the stuff that got passed, uh, you know, about four to six weeks ago, we still don't have the guidance on that. And whatever is that, you know, talked about tonight uh, would, you know, get shaped through the legislative process, get passed, and then we'd probably get the guidance after that. So I think the answer, uh, you know, we checked with our, uh, you know, the university system. The answer is, is we don't know because on well, what the definitions uh, might be uh, on that. So that we'll just have to wait and see on that one, Joel. See, I, I, I think that's fair. I mean, I do. I, I And I've heard that about some of the other dollars that are coming in. I mean, the dollars can be put to work, obviously, but uh, – you know, where and how, I think, is certainly part of the conversation. Will that require a special session by you? I mean, we're, there's obviously everybody's going to look at redistricting, those type of things. But can you see a scenario where you're going to need these legislators back to be able to appropriate some of these dollars? Yeah, I think that's a possibility. I mean, that has to be on the table because there, there uh, appears to be so much money that's either known or – Still undetermined that could be coming our way, and I think that as a uh, <clears throat> putting some of those dollars through the uh, uh, appropriation process would make uh, make sense, uh, depending on the guidelines. Uh, you know, last year when we got dollars from the coronavirus relief funds, I mean, the guidelines were quite narrow in terms of how it could be used. Uh, so the process that we had last year with the emergency commission budget section worked well for accepting those federal dollars for those. Uh, you know, stated purposes that had to be spent within that time frame. I mean, they originally they had to be spent by 12:30, so in that window before the legislature is coming back. Some of this money that's coming now might have a window where it's you know spent. Uh, the the back end could be, uh, you know, 2023 or 2024. So yeah, I think there's a a much stronger argument on this go around about uh, the potential for a special session than there was last year, and and uh, we certainly would look forward to talking about that with the leaders. Governor, you're the leader of the Republican Party. I mean, you are. You are the highest-ranking elected official in the whole state of North Dakota, and you're a Republican. Um, there are people going around in the Republican Party holding, and, and it's fair, double-secret meetings on how they can beat fellow Republicans because they're not Republican enough in their eyes. As the uh, leader of the Republican Party, what do you intend to do on that? Are you going to look at it case by case? Are you going to uh, stick up for some of these more progressive Republicans? I mean, how do you see the role uh, that you play as leader of the Republican Party here? Well, I think the the role that I play as you know, leader of the Republican Party, but also as governor of the state, is I've got to make decisions every day that serve every citizen in the state of North Dakota. And, and we're sometimes, I think, get caught up in the politics of uh, – you know, with, within our own party, uh, I know that in other states where they've got supermajority Democrat-controlled legislators talking to those governors, they've got the same issue there, where you got one wing of the party fighting uh, with another. But at the end of the day, it's you know, North Dakota. We're competing against uh, every other state, and we're competing against the world. And I think part of it is we got to we got to sort of raise our understanding that we're competing for capital, we're competing for jobs, we're competing for workforce. We're competing for innovation, and uh, some of the some of the battles that are happening here are uh, not productive relative to helping North Dakota, uh, you know, achieve its fullest potential. And so, you know, trying to uh, sort through. I think coming out of COVID, there's a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, tension that people have, and a lot of people are consuming a lot of information on social media, uh, <clears throat> on that are helping you know drive further uh, <clears throat> further divisions on both ends of the spectrum. And I think it's a, a, we need to make sure that we're, uh, that we're being thoughtful about doing the things that are not just best for an individual or best for a party, but we got to keep, if we keep doing the right things for the state of North Dakota and the people that live here, uh, if Republicans remember to do that, Republicans are going to continue to enjoy the uh, success they've had at the, uh, uh, on election day that they've had for a long time, because we're, a party that's about solving problems and making sure the state runs well, low taxes uh, and, you know, low taxes and low regulation and, and the ability to create jobs and innovate and people to have, you know, strong communities and, and whatever. I mean, this is what, this is what part of what we all love about North Dakota is, is our communities, our families and the connections we have. And I think we just have to stay focused on what make North Dakota 
uh, strong and keep focusing on that going forward. You know, you just basically listened to a conversation that you can't have unless you have a supermajority. I mean, you really can't. The Republicans have been very successful in the state of North Dakota, and so there really is two Republican parties, the Bastiat Caucus, which obviously you've heard uh, Dr. Becker here on this very network brag about as though it's in power. Um, you know, maybe people like myself have underestimated it. I do know this. They want to take us back in time. They do. They want to take us back in time. And, and the thing about this caucus is it doesn't care whether it leads this state to a place where it can't succeed. Uh, Representative Vista, who you heard earlier, gave some perfect examples of how they've denigrated the process of the legislature itself. No hearings. Uh, you've lost on bills, so you tack it into other bills. You hope to ram it through at the end of the legislative session. You know, if you're going to type a legislature, I'm not convinced you should have that seed. I think that that caucus has to worry just as much about what they're going to do to them as what they are going to do to others. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. In Wapaton at the frying pan, the Jason Heitkamps of the world, uh, who, quite frankly, when he shaves, uh, he might be the only person that really likes Jason as far as who sees him. Uh, but Jason Heitkamps of the world are the ones that uh, are running around trying to get rid of other legislators, other Republican legislators in large part uh, because they're not ultra-conservatives like himself. Well, that's the process. He can go from district to district to do that. But also part of that prox uh, process is payback. And payback can be a, you know what it can be. A and so he's got to look out for that as well. They don't like the governor. They don't. They don't like the governor. You may hear on these airways, oh, we don't have any problem with the governor. They don't like Governor Burgum. They don't like his style. They don't like he, what he did when it came to being primaried into having that Republican seat on the ballot. They don't like him. They don't like him because every now and then he pushes legislation that actually involves a discussion on where North Dakota could be in the future instead of where it's going to be in the past. And that's the problem. When you can't look at someone and you can't tell them what you're for, instead of constantly telling them what you're against. You're not an individual that is serving the state of North Dakota. You're just an individual that's serving yourself. And that's the cold, hard truth. That really is. I didn't vote for Doug Burgum, and Doug Burgum wouldn't vote for me. I get it. I understand it. But he's a much better person than what these individuals are that are running around and trying to tack everything they can into bills that have already been defeated or bills that do something very good that they then try to use as vehicles for bills that have been defeated. It's wrong. It's really wrong. When we come back, Molly Hall's going to join us. She's with the North Dakota Health Department. Let's get an update on where North Dakota is at when it comes to vaccinations. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. 
Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan, and yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Watch No Filter with me, Debbie Schlossel, for no-nonsense, unfiltered analysis of the news that matters to you. You'll see engaging guests. It began a 444-day nightmare. Entertaining analysis. And it has everything to do with something that happened in history. And honest movie reviews. Trust me, this is just atrocious. No Filter with Debbie, weeknights at 10 p.m. Central on Beck News and online at Beck.News. You know, people always look at jobs and they say, I can do that. You know, I, that, I can do that. I can, I can do that job or I can do this job. Well, here's a job I don't think any of us want to do or any of us wanted. Uh, she's the North Dakota Department of Health Immunization Program Manager. We've had her on the show before. We're glad to have her back. Molly Hall, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you know why I called. I want an update. Where's North Dakota when it comes to our vaccinations? Well, according to the CDC vaccine tracker, uh, more than 50% of North Dakota adults 18 and older have at least one dose of COVID vaccine. So we can now say that the majority of North Dakota adults have chosen to be vaccinated. So you say at least one dose. There's some data and some stats out there that are showing people aren't showing up for that second dose. Um, are we seeing that in North Dakota as well? A small percentage of North Dakotans who received the first dose are more than 42 days behind from when, or, or are more than 42 days out from when they received their first dose. It's less than 4%. It's a little over um, 9,200 North Dakotans. And so um, we will work to get those individuals in, whether they forgot about getting their second dose. Um, some people I know um, got vaccinated in North Dakota and then went down south for the winter, so we might have some of that going on. And I think also there's some uh, mixed messaging about people who have previously had COVID, whether or not they need one or two doses. And so they do, they are recommended to receive both doses, even if you previously had COVID. And so we probably have to correct some of that misinformation as well. Well, there also is a concern out there, and I can verify this uh, as an individual who has had COVID and, and had both of my shots. Uh, there is some information out there that, that is spreading uh, that that second COVID shot knocks you on your butt uh, and that uh, first one's good enough, it covers you, and the second one will make you sicker and heck. I want to give you a chance to speak to that. Well, and I've heard both. I've heard sometimes people who previously had COVID have more of that, those side effects after the first dose. So fever, chills, muscle aches, joint pain, um, headache, that type of thing. And then I've also heard after the second dose, people are feeling a little bit more crummy. I didn't have COVID. And after my second dose, I had about a day of having a, a fever and a bit of chills and was still able to work. But I think overall, the message is these vaccines in clinical trials were a two-dose series, the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna. And so to achieve that 94 to 95% efficacy, you really have to have both doses, especially with variants circuiting. We want to make sure people are adequate, adequately protected. Can it, it, Well, I better address this because... In, in full disclosure, I didn't feel good after the second dose. I, mm -hmm. I didn't, but it wasn't any big deal. I mean, it really wasn't. It was, 
you know, and, and it flipped on like a switch. Uh, the, you know, I had the second dose at about 4 in the afternoon. The next day, about 3.30 in the afternoon, I didn't feel good. I went home, sat in a chair. The next morning, I felt like a million dollars. So keep that in mind, folks. At least that's one person's example. If you wait too long to get that second shot, is there a too long? You know, for example, if I get that first shot and I wait five, six months, will it still be my second shot and still be good enough to be fully vaccinated? Yeah, there's not a maximum interval between doses, just a minimum. And so for Pfizer, it, the minimum is 21 days. For Moderna, the minimum is 28 days, but there's no maximum. So even if you come back later than what you were scheduled or what was recommended, you would still just receive your second dose. You don't have to start the series over. So here's again, in the, for what it's worth, as somebody who gets all around the state of North Dakota. So I go to Morton, North Dakota, and it, and it, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but it was raining in our area. I know there's a lot of people in the state that need rain, but we, we got some down in that southeast corner. So I go to Morton to meet one of my buddies at the Antelope Creek, and we're going to have a beer, okay? And the town's full. I mean, it, it looks like uh, Memorial Day, and everybody's there just having uh, lunch together. But here's the thing. No, none of those folks were in the Antelope Creek. So I start asking around, like, what the heck's all the cars from? Uh they were all going in to be vaccinated at the community center in Morton. Now, the point I'm trying to raise is this. I'm, you know, I live, we're all from small town North Dakota in one way or another. Those guys came into the Antelope Creek, some of them later on, and they are not the stereotypical, hey, I believe in this kind of guys. And so, you know, I use that as an opportunity to talk to them. And one of them was a guy named Steve. I won't say his last name, but I said, Steve, I didn't think you'd go get vaccinated. He said, why not? Heck yeah. You know what? I'm scared of this doggone thing. And so I really took that, Molly, as a good sign. Yeah, I think it is a good sign. I think um, there are some people who maybe don't realize how serious COVID can be. I think there's a lot going around about, well, 99% of people survive. So why would I go out and get vaccinated? And severity of disease isn't just about death, although I, I don't want to see 1% of North Dakotans die due to COVID. Um, it's also about hospitalization. One in 200 North Dakotans have been hospitalized with COVID. More than one in 10 people who get COVID have long-term symptoms and issues related to COVID, whether it's shortness of breath, memory loss, fatigue. And so it's not just about the death. This is an illness that is severe and can be severe, and we don't know who is going to be asymptomatic and have mild illness and who's going to have severe disease. And so it's important to be vaccinated for yourself, but also more and more, these vaccines are showing they prevent asymptomatic infection as well, and so likely transmission. And so it's important to get vaccinated for your community, for the people who are over 60, who maybe the vaccine might not work as well. We're still learning more about that. Although today data came out from the CDC showing a 94% effectiveness at preventing hospitalization in people 65 and older. Um, it's about getting vaccinated to protect our children even who can't yet get vaccinated. And so I think a lot of people care about others in their community and care about themselves and will choose to get vaccinated. So when you say there, there are long-lasting side effects, you know, I believe that. I, I have a shortness of breath. I do. And there were some that had it more severe than I do. And, you know, they're worried about lung damage and permanent lung da damage. Do we know about that at all? I mean, am I going to get better uh, after having COVID or do you just not know? I think they're learning more and more as we go. And there's additional studies. I think, you know, there was one study that showed... 60% of people who recover from COVID had ongoing signs of heart inflammation. And so what does that mean moving forward for that individual and will it ever subside? There's also some indication, and these are anecdotal reports, not a study, of people who have long hauler symptoms that are saying they improved after getting the vaccine. And so I think we still need to know more information about long haul COVID and, and if the vaccine helps alleviate some of those symptoms. And so hopefully we'll have more data in the future on both of those things. What about Johnson & Johnson? Because when they pulled that off, uh, obviously the CDC has put that back on now, but uh, you know, 
is there a hesitancy hesitancy when it comes to it? Are there people who are saying, nope, if I'm going to get vaccinated, not the Johnson & Johnson? We have seen healthcare providers already this week have resumed administering the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So there are people accepting it. Um, we didn't have a ton of Johnson & Johnson vaccine in this state. And so I think this week we received an allocation for next week of 1800 doses. And so it'll be interesting to see how quickly those 1800 doses go out next week. Um, but all in all, they looked at data to determine um, this blood clot side effect and, and, and found that giving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is overwhelmingly going to prevent more hospitalizations and deaths than the potential of causing some of these blood clots. And so um, medical experts did do that analysis and are recommending that Johnson & Johnson vaccine be used again. In the little bit of time I have left, I, I have to ask you this. Can can you, if you've been vaccinated, for example, I've got an office building where everybody's been vaccinated, but uh, people are worried to take off their masks because in the office structure, which is basically locked down because they think they can still be a carrier. Can they? No, I mean, you could have, you could potentially get vaccinated and then get COVID if you're, if you're exposed. I mean, there is a small percent of people in North Dakota, less than 1% of people who are vaccinated have gone on to get COVID. So it's a very low risk. And so I think if you're vaccinated and you're with other people who are vaccinated, you can definitely um, take off the mask. I think CDC has said that as long as you're, you know you're in a group with un other vaccinated individuals. Okay, Molly, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming on with us again. Thanks. Uh, when we come back, just a short little segment, we'll give you some final commentary right here as we go down the road. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card Information Kit. 1-800-416-5739. Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano... Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. Come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, shuffle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maiden and Bismarck. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. 
Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. In just a little while, uh, the President of the United States, to a joint session of Congress, is going to lay out what his game plan is. That'll be his first time speaking to a joint session. Now, you're probably going to watch it, you're probably going to hear it, and you might ignore it, but either way, we're going to talk about it uh, tomorrow on Down the Road. So what's it going to be? What's he going to say? The one thing that I am the most excited to hear him break down is infrastructure because I am and always have been when it comes to politics and infrastructure guy. I believed in building water systems, roads, bridges, curb, gutter, sewer systems. That's the key to government. Okay, well, his vision of what that key might be might be different than mine in certain areas. But I would ask you, you know, I would ask you right now, do you believe paying tuition for those young individuals that are going to community college for the first two years is infrastructure. Well, I can tell you this, you're never gonna build a water system, you're never gonna build a sewer line, you're never gonna build curb and gutter without workers to do it. And what this nation desperately needs is workers to do it. I deal on a daily basis with a car dealership. They've invested in the North Dakota State College of Science looking for workers, they struggle. And it isn't the North Dakota State College of Science that struggles. They struggle because these kids are well-educated and they can make more money somewhere else. And so we got to figure that out as well. We do. We have to figure out how we can keep our young people here and how we can invest in them so that if they make a buck or two less, they're not looking at it in terms of, man, I got this student loan, so I'm going to have to move there. I'm going to have to move to the Twin Cities. Maybe we can leave, uh, leave that. Now, one of the big questions you have to ask yourself as well is what's the definition of a community college, right? We went about, you know, naming uh, many of our institutions universities, right? So do they qualify our two-year schools as community college? Because you know what? They're in a group. They're in a university system now. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I just know it's worth having a conversation about. And we'll do some of that tomorrow. Good riding with you, folks.